This has been one of the most anticipated releases this year. If you don't already, I'm talking about Ghosty, which has just become widely available as version one. I'm gonna show you what I love about it and how I take it from this to this. If you haven't seen it yet though, Ghosty is a terminal emulator that differentiates itself by being fast, feature rich and native. Oh, and of course it can play Doom. It's actually an open source passion project written mostly in Zig from Mitchell Hashimoto, the co-founder of HashiCorp, which brought you products like Terraform. So he has the credentials to make this awesome. So let's get it installed. At the moment, Ghosty supports macOS and Linux and installing it is super easy. You can see all of the methods for doing so on that documentation. And for Mac, I can just install it like any other application. When I open it up, I get a pretty simple terminal window, but it already feels super fast compared to other tools that I've used. And that's literally all that is needed to get started. Actually, one of Ghosty's design goals was to be zero configuration for most users, and it does this with a load of sensible defaults. But don't worry, if you love terminal customization, it has tons of options to configure this to suit your needs. So let's go ahead and make a few. One thing I want to change is the theme. Now you may be thinking this means you'll be limited to a few pre-built options or have to create your own since it's quite new, but Ghosty actually did something super cool here and it brings you all of the themes from iTerm2 color schemes. You can preview all of these with the Ghosty CLI as well. All you have to do is run Ghosty plus list-themes and you can scroll through all of them to find out what you like. Once you know which one you want, for me, it's the popular Capuchin theme, we can then edit the configuration file, add the theme and reload the config with command shift comma. Another thing you might have a preference for is your font as well. This is customizable in Ghosty, but it also comes with a few popular nerd fonts optimized for you. Lucky for me, my favorite is JetBrains Mono, and Ghosty uses this out of the box, including with configurable support for ligatures. In fact, they're the only terminal emulator other than iTerm that uses metal directly, but the only one that has a metal renderer that supports the ligatures. All of this just means that it works super well. For Linux, it uses OpenGL, by the way, which means it works amazingly well there too. You can keep configuring this as much as you like. There's so many options down to changing the color of the background, frame and ghost on the Mac OS icon. I personally only change the theme though, as I like to keep it as little configuration as possible. And I may add a few keybinds over time as well. Now I'm gonna spruce up my terminal bit with oh my Z shell and it all works really nice. It should have support for pretty much anything you're already doing, whether that was something like Tmux or any other customizations you may have done. It's honestly something you have to try out. It's hard to completely convey just how good this terminal feels. I've actually been daily driving warp for a bit and this experience feels so much smoother, especially when we start involving the next features of multiple tabs and windows. Ghosty uses native macOS components for UI elements such as these tabs and splits, which makes it feel super smooth. It's honestly what the default Mac terminal should be. A feature even cooler than this though is the quick terminal, sometimes known as a top down or quake terminal. I assign this to a global keybind, which means it's always available even if the app isn't focused. And this is so handy when you don't want to context switch, but you need to launch something like a Docker container while you're doing some development. Overall, one of the primary design goals of Ghosty was to look, feel, and behave like a purpose-built native application on each platform. So on top of what we've just seen there, we have a few more native experiences on Mac. First, when you're prompted for a password, you'll see this padlock icon. This is because it enables secure keyboard entry to protect your passwords from other processes. Like in other apps as well, you can use force touch to use quick look for definitions, web searches, and more. And it even has a proxy icon, meaning you can drag this icon in the title bar to move or access terminal session files or navigate to the file path directly. Just a load of cool quality of life features. For rendering, Ghosty supports the Kitty graphics protocol, which allows terminal applications to render images directly in the terminal, but it does this super fast. There's actually a benchmark called Doomfire, and you can see it's gonna destroy the bitrate of this video, so I won't show it for too long, but at the bottom, it shows it can do around 480 FPS on my MacBook Pro. Mitchell actually states that it comes second of all of these terminals he tries, and it only loses out compared to Alacrity. He does explain though, this is due to a trade-off to optimize memory usage. The final thing to know is the terminal features for terminal developers. Ghosty is one of the most modern and comprehensive terminal emulators available, which is crazy since it's only just come out. And the goal with Ghosty is to be the most compatible for legacy applications while also providing the most modern features for new applications. To me though, the coolest part about this is how they decide to implement features. Ghosty takes the approach that the behavior is defined by the standards if they're available, then Xterm if a feature exists there, and then finally other popular terminals in that specific order though. That is what defines what Ghosty views as the standard. One of the most unique features they have to support terminal developers though is the terminal inspector. 
The terminal inspector works similarly to a web inspector. It's a per terminal panel that contains live updating information about the running terminal. It is still experimental, being purely read only today, but there's plans to make it read right in the future. This will be absolutely awesome for terminal developers. Continuing this big vision of helping developers then, libghosty is actually the core cross-platform library that powers ghosty. The hope is that developers can focus on the hard work of building a great application and get fast, feature-rich, standards-compliant terminal emulation for free. Now, it's not yet considered stable or available as a standalone public API, but Ghosty does use libghosty internally. The goal after this release, though, is to reach a point where libghosty is released as a standalone library and to expand platform support beyond macOS and Linux, especially to WebAssembly, which will be super cool to see. There you go, that's Ghosty. As I mentioned earlier, you really have to try this to fall in love with it. Let me know if you have tried it in the comments down below and if it's missing anything, or which terminal emulator you currently love, like Westterm or Kitty. And while you're there, like and subscribe. As always, see you in the next one.